Hey you guys, so I asked you what you wanted to see today on Twitter and a couple of you had asked for a kind of bronzy gold summery look, so that's what I went for. So if you want to see how to do this summery look, then keep on watching. Let's do this. Okay, so I think today I'm going to go ahead and skip foundation, so I'll show you guys how I do that. Um, sometimes when my skin is doing a little bit better and I don't have uh, very many spots and stuff like that, I will just apply concealer and pretty much go without foundation. Um, I really like doing this in the summer because I just hate, you know, it's like I want to be dewy, but I don't want to be like sweaty. And when you're dewy and don't set your foundation, you like go like this in the summertime, it just, it's not a good thing. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna show you guys how I do no foundation, I guess. <laughs> Done. Just kidding. So, I'm gonna take my NARS Creamy Radiant Concealer in the shade Custard, and I'm just going to apply that underneath the eyes and just kind of drag it down in stripes, basically. Okay, so the reason why I'm applying this in stripes instead of dots, as I'll sometimes do, is because I want to provide a little bit of a gradient so that it's not just coverage directly under my eyes. This is going to just kind of slowly fade away into the rest of my face. So we're basically keeping foundation off the perimeter, but we're adding a little bit of coverage just to the center um, to conceal any kind of under eye circles we have, but also just make it so it's not such like a blunt, like boom, concealer. So I'm gonna be taking this big fluffy brush and just tapping. Oh, I left my concealer a little bit too long, so it kind of started to set. But I'm basically just tapping that into the skin and then kind of wiping it once I get towards the end here. Um, again, I tap right under here so that I can keep that coverage and then I start to wipe because I want it to be faded out and a little bit less uh, full coverage towards the edges. And I'm also just going to basically go over my nose with this a little bit. And then I'm just going to take the excess that's on the brush as well and just sweep over my kind of brow bone area because I do have a little bit of redness there. And then you can just really gently sweep over any other parts that you just need a little bit of color correcting on. And that's just where I'm going to leave this. I'm going to go ahead and apply highlight and contour later, but this is pretty much what I'm doing for um, my base makeup. A lot of people have been asking me how you can become kind of confident um, not wearing foundation, and honestly, it took a really, really long time. I have a couple friends that are makeup artists that don't wear any foundation whatsoever, and I was always like, man, how do you do it? Because I feel like even if I had flawless skin, I still would have a really hard time doing it. Um, but honestly, you do get used to it. What I recommend if you want to slowly start not wearing foundation or wearing less even is to just, if you have full coverage foundation, cut it with a little bit of moisturizer to thin it out so you get a little bit more of a sheer application and then basically just keep getting sheer and sheer with your foundations until you're like at a pretty lightweight um, foundation that's not going to have a ton of coverage and then that's when you can kind of start to be like, okay, I'm, I can step away now. I'm used to freckles and sunspots and all that kind of stuff, a little bit of discoloration. It's definitely not for everyone, it is a different look for sure. Um, full foundation is beautiful, bare skin is beautiful, whatever you like, go hard man. The last thing I'm going to do just quickly is I'm going to take a beauty blender with a little bit of water in it and just kind of go over that and make sure that the edges are really diffused because I don't want it to be like a really obvious like concealer line. Okay so I already have a MAC paint pot down and a neutral toned eyeshadow all over the lid. Um, that's just going to help to stop my eyeshadows from creasing as well as to make the colors brighter etc etc. You guys know the drill. So today on Battle Lash, Peach Smoothie from Makeup Geek will be making its comeback. That's right. So I'm going to take Peach Smoothie and I'm going to just blend it into the crease. I'm going to be using this as my transition color, which is going to make it easier to blend out darker colors later. So just blend that right into the crease, leaving the lid pretty bare. Next, I'm going to go ahead and take NARS Persia because so many of you are asking to see another tutorial using this on Twitter. And I'm just going to be using a slightly smaller blending brush and I'm just going to take that right into the crease and kind of outer corner as well. And then I'm just going to start to kind of fade that about one third of the way onto the lid. Applying with a smaller brush is going to kind of help you to get the correct 
placement of the eyeshadow that you want whereas if you were to apply with a bigger brush it would kind of be all over the place it would start to get muddy really fast you'd get all up here and crazy be like what's going on my life is ruined i suck at makeup i'll never be good at this and i'd be like no just use a smaller brush homie it's gonna be okay and then you can go ahead and use your bigger brush to blend it out like I'm doing now. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take Anastasia's Cognac on a little brush and I'm going to start to define that outer crease or outer corner, I guess, outer corner crease, the outer V area. And I'm just going to start to darken it up a little bit with that color. Oh God, I almost dropped my brush. And then I'm gonna use this to blend it out, this thing that I call a brush. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and take a little bit of Makeup Geeks Mocha and define that crease even more, but I'm going to not drag it down to the lash line this time. I'm just going to keep it right on that outer corner kind of crease area. And then just blend it a teensy little bit. Not too much, just a, just a little bit so it gets the idea. Knows where it's at. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take a stiff, dense brush and I'm going to be using Makeup Geek's Flamethrower for this and I'm just going to pack that on to the outer half of the lid. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take Anastasia's Peach Sorbet that's really beautiful and looks like this. And I'm just gonna grab that on my talon and apply it right to the inner corner half of the lid and I'm just going to dab that on and again the reason why I use my fingers for shadows that have kind of a shimmery texture is because I want to preserve that texture and sometimes if you use a brush it just it doesn't turn out quite as shimmery or the color isn't as intense whatever it may be so if you have a shadow that you just feel like it's not as amazing on the eyes as it is when you swatch it, try applying it with your finger first and then blend it out with a brush, which is what I'm gonna do now. I just have a little bit more of that on that brush and I'm just going to drag it into the inner corner where my talon cannot reach. And I'm also going to pat to blend these together. I'm just gonna go ahead and use a little bit of the Balm's No Money No Honey as an inner corner highlight here. So a lot of people have been asking me what my favorite eyeliner is for summer, if you have watery eyes or if you want to go swimming with winged eyeliner for whatever reason, if you fabulous. Um, and honestly, a lot of you are going to be like, wow, you're such a bullshitter because when this product first came out, everyone didn't necessarily love it. Well, actually, it was a love or hate thing. It was like people absolutely were like, damn, this is the best thing ever, or they were like, man, this is not for me at all. Um, and that's the Benefit Very Real Push-Up Liner. Now, I have a video review up on this, and when I first tried it, I was kind of like, eh, I see the appeal, not quite for me. I don't use it from the applicator, pretty much ever. What I like to do is push it up, so I'm getting a little bit of product out of the tip there, and I just put it right onto a palette like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it straight from the palette with a little tiny brush. This is the Smith 202 brush and it's the balm for eyeliner. If you don't have it, you should get it. And that is the truth. And I'm literally just going to take that eyeliner on this little brush and use it straight from the palette and I'm going to go ahead and apply my winged liner. Honestly, there's a lot of different eyeliners out there. This is the most pain in the ass one to get off and that's exactly what I look for in an eyeliner. So I have been using it a lot this summer. If you have it and you didn't like it, straight from the applicator, try using it with a brush and see what you think. So just applying my winged eyeliner like normal, I like to go ahead and apply my line straight across the lid first. And then I go ahead and do a line basically coming up from my lower lash line. And then right from that tip there, I pull it down to connect with the other line. And then once I have my basic shape out, I can kind of take some more product and perfect it. Okay, so for this next part, I'm going to be using Anastasia's Waterproof Cream Color in Coral Reef. Honestly, I've been freaking living for this summer collection, and I know you guys are probably getting sick of seeing me use it, but tough luck, Buttercup, because I'm going to continue to use it, because I just love them. The colors are so nice, and they just it's just what I want right now. So anyways, I'm going to take that on a little tiny brush. And I'm just going to basically go above my, my, I'm going to go above the top of my winged liner and I'm just going to draw a little line. 
And when you're doing this, it's better that you go too close to the black than too high up because you can go ahead and fix up the black after, but if you go too high up onto the eyeshadow, it's going to be a lot more difficult to fix. So yeah, I'm just going to build that up a little bit. And then basically, I'm starting by applying the color in the center so that I'm getting the most um, intensity right there. And then once I get towards the end, I just kind of drag that color to fade it. So if you just went a little too crazy with the eyeliner and it's bumpy looking, all you need to do is just take a liquid liner and go black, go back over that black and you will have a nice sharp line again. Okay, so next I'm going to go ahead and take the Anastasia Waterproof Cream Color in Ice Blue. This is one of my all-time favorites from the line. And I'm just going to apply that to the waterline. Oh, this is so hard to do with these bright lights. Oh, it kills my eyes. So next, I'm going to go ahead and take Anastasia's Cognac again on that little um, Real Techniques... Oh my god, how did I forget this name? Accent brush. Holy. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and take that and apply it right under the lower lash line. And I'm going to drag that all the way to the inner corner once I have less product on my brush. Basically, you want to touch your brush down wherever you want the heaviest deposit of product. And then once you kind of have most of the product off, the, off your brush, you can kind of start to move it towards wherever else to get it a little bit more faded. And then I'm just going to go ahead and take NARS Persia again on this little brush to kind of diffuse the bottom color there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and apply lashes and mascara and I'll show you guys the finished look. So that is the final look. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you guys how I do the rest of my face makeup just for the lols. So I'm gonna go ahead and use Becca Moonstone. This is one of the most beautiful highlighters of all time, but you guys already knew that because everybody talks about it nonstop. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and take a little brush and just apply that to the tops of my cheekbones. Whoa, I apply a lot. I'm going to blend that out for the next 34 hours. So just the tops of my cheekbones, and then I'm just kind of blending that out in circular motions. And then I'm also going to apply a little bit to the bridge of my nose, just because. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply my Makeup Forever... Oh, I can't open this thing. Makeup Forever Pro Bronze Fusion in, I think the shade is 20M, but I'm not sure. It looks like this. If that helps. And I'm going to be using my NARS Eda brush, and I'm just going to apply it to my face right underneath that highlight. The reason why I apply my highlight first as opposed to my bronzer or contour is because when I apply my highlight first I feel like it's more of a kind of glow from within type of gig as opposed to here's some highlight chilling on my face. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like I can't blend my highlight properly and it starts to look muddy on my face if I apply my found or apply my highlighter after my bronzer. And again, if you choose to skip foundation, your natural kind of freckles and discoloration is going to show through a little bit. So it might look a little bit dirty or like muddy in photos as people like to freaking so casually call out at me. But um, it just is, it's just a different look. So if you like it, dope. If you don't, whatever. And I'm also going to take a little bit of that bronzer and just bring it through my temple here. So to finish off my face, I'm going to be using a little bit of Becca Wild Honey, which is one of my all-time favorite blushes. I absolutely love this color. You guys probably already know. I get a little bit obsessive about blushes. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply that right to the cheeks and blend it into my contour and highlight. I like to do a little bit more natural of a blush and contour when I'm not wearing foundation because otherwise it starts to look a little bit crazy. So this is pretty much where I leave my face makeup when I'm not doing foundation. I choose not to powder whether I'm wearing foundation or not because I like to look oily. But if you do have particularly oily skin and you don't want to get shiny, then you might choose to just use a translucent or colored setting powder and just apply it all over your face. For my lips, I'm just going to go ahead and apply Max Runway Hit. Is that what this is called? Yeah. Runway Hit. This is from the new matte collection. It kind of applies dry and almost patchy when you swatch it, but on the lips, it is gorgeous. I don't know. It's just a really pretty color. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and apply that. So this is 
the final look. I hope you guys like it and learned something cool today. Let me know what you'd like to see next in the comments below and we can chat about it. Okay guys, peace out.